the small town of Libby, Montana, has been struggling to catch its breath. The W.R. Grace for Mickey Light Mine operated from outside and inside the confines of the northwest Montana town for decades. The reality stretches back some 69 years of sickness to an unstoppable disease from exposure to a toxic fiber that are forever woven into remembrance of icons such as a community quilt paying tribute to lost loved ones. 59-year-old Dan Freeberry has only 20% lung capacity remaining from exposure to asbestos fibers that found their way into the most innermost walls of his lungs while growing up in Libby. His days are spent sitting because of his lost strength. Simple acts like opening the door are nearly impossible without some creative ingenuity. That company owes me a life, he says. The W.R. Grace mine handed out packs of vermiculite for children to play with. Igniting the rock would cause it to pop, releasing deadly fibers. Residents living near railroad tracks breathe fibers sent flying by speeding freight trains, delivering vermiculite all over the United States. 51-year-old Rose Boker of Spokane travels over 100 miles each way to check her lung capacity at the Card Clinic in Libby. Rose, her mother, husband, two sisters, and several in-laws who were raised in Libby are all ill. The EPA with Paul Perinard continued to find answers as daily life continues and oxygen tubes stretching across countless homes feed lungs that are slowly clogging. Religion and hope of the future will keep Libby going. The deaths caused by asbestos are more common now. Old friends paid tribute to longtime asbestos advocate Les Scramstead when asbestos slowly choked him to death. Once again, a town comes together to send a loved one on his way. This is Brian Plonka, photojournalist for SpokesmanReview.com.